Hi there everyone, my name is Andre Marius and in this Envato Task Plus tutorial I will show you how to create this needed text effect in Adobe Illustrator. Before we begin the tutorial, make sure to check out Envato Elements, where with a simple subscription you can get unlimited access to millions of creative digital assets, such as music, graphics, photos, fonts and many more. You can subscribe right now with the link in the description. Let's open Illustrator to create a new document. Select pixels from this drop down menu, set the width to 850 pixels and the height to 670 pixels. Set the color mode to RGB. Make sure that the resolution is set to 72 pixels per inch and then create your new document. Press Ctrl and 0 to zoom in on the entire artboard. Go to View and Show Grid to enable the grid. Again to View, but this time to Snap to Grid to enable the Snap to Grid feature. And for this tutorial you will need a grid line every one pixel. Just go to Edit, Preferences, Guides and Grid. Enter 1 in this grid line every box. Keep the subdivision set to 1. Click OK and now if you select the zoom tool and zoom in on your artboard, you will notice that you have a grid line every one pixel. Before you start the work on the design, let's open the panels that will be used throughout this tutorial. All you have to do is go to Window in the menu bar and open the Appearance panel, the Brushes panel, the Color panel, the Gradient panel, the Layers panel and the Swatches panel. Once you're done, select the Ellipse tool from your toolbar. Just click on your artboard, which will open this window where you can set the size of the shape that you wish to create. Set the width to 2 pixels and the height to 9 pixels. Click OK to create your new shape. Let's press Ctrl and plus a few times to zoom in on this new shape. And then press Shift and X to easily swap the fill and stroke color settings. Select the stroke and remove the color. And move to the brushes panel to save your selected shape as a new brush. Before we do this, let's quickly clean up this panel. Open the flyer menu and go to select all unused, which will select all your unused brushes. Remove them using this button. And then click this other button to save your selected shape as an art brush. So check this box. Click OK which will open this new panel where you can set the settings of your art brush. Just name it black. Keep the rest of the settings. Change the colorization method to tints, which means that the brush will change color whenever you are adjusting the stroke color. Keep the settings as they are and click OK to add your new brush inside the brushes panel. Now return to the appearance panel to change the color of this shape to 246, 72 and 49. Add a second fill using this button and change the color to white. Expand it so you can open the transparency flyout panel and lower the opacity of your white fill to 50%. Change the blending mode to soft light and then go to effect path and offset path. Set the offset to minus 0.5. Click OK and get back to the brushes panel to save this shape as a new art brush. Let's name it red. Keep the rest of the settings. This time set the colorization method to none and click OK to save your new art brush. Get back to the appearance panel to select this fill. Change the color to 246, 192 and 168. Increase the opacity of this white fill to 100% and then return to the brushes panel to save this shape as a new art brush. Name it pink. Keep the rest of the settings. Again set the colorization method to none and click OK to save this third art brush. Now that you have these brushes, you can press the delete key to remove your shape. Select the line tool from your toolbar and create an 8 pixels vertical path. 
Select the stroke from the appearance panel and apply your black R brush. Change the color to yellow. Select the direct selection tool from your toolbar and use it to select this anchor point. Just drag it 3 pixels to the right. Switch to the move tool and use it to select this entire path. And go to object, transform and reflect. Check this vertical box and if you click this copy button, you will get this flipped copy. Drag it in this exact location and then select both paths and press Ctrl and G to group them. Now hold down the Alt key to drag a copy of this group to the right. Apply your red R brush. Drag a second copy in this point and then select both groups and drag copies down to this location. When you're done, select all four groups. Go to Object and Expand Appearance, which will turn your applied brushes into vector shapes. Continue by selecting the rectangle tool from your toolbar. Click on your artboard and create an 8 by 7 pixels shape. Fill it with black and lower the opacity to about 50%, just so you can better see what lies behind this shape. Switch to the Move tool and place this rectangle in this exact location. And when you are done, select it along with all these red shapes and pick the Shape Builder tool from your toolbar. Hold down the Alt and the Shift keys and start drawing rectangular selection across the shapes that lie outside your black rectangle. Let's continue with this side. Don't miss this tiny area. And when you are done, switch back to the Move tool. Select only this black shape and delete it. And then select the remaining group of shapes and just drag it inside the swatches panel so you can save it as a pattern. Once you can see your pattern inside the swatches panel, you can remove this group. Let's also move this group outside the artboard and then press Ctrl and 0 to zoom in on your entire artboard. Reselect the rectangle tool. And this time let's create a shape that's the size of your artboard. Set the width to 850 and the height to 670. Click OK to create your new shape. Again press Shift and X to swap the fill and stroke color settings. Select the fill and change the color to 206, 32 and 8. Move to the control panel and make sure that the alignment is set to artboard. And then click these two buttons to move your rectangle in the center of the artboard, which means that your shape will cover the entire artboard. Move to the appearance panel to add a second fill for this shape. Make sure that you have it selected and just apply your pattern from the swatches panel. Open this layer so you can lock this shape. Move this group on top of it. Select it and press Ctrl plus a few times to zoom in on it. Switch to the Move tool and move this group on top of the background right on top of this knit. Hold down the Alt key to add four copies like this. Select all four copies and press Ctrl G to group them. Select the stroke so you can change the brush color to blue and return to the layers panel to rename these two groups blue and yellow. Having these two groups, now you need to multiply them and use the copies to build your letters one by one. Press Ctrl minus to zoom out. Hold down the spacebar to have a better look at the entire artboard. And now let's create the first letter, which will be a W, to better understand what it will take you to create the rest of the letters. Start by selecting the blue group, drag a copy, and then add six more copies vertically. Continue with the yellow group and add 4 group copies like this. Another 3 group copies like this. And then 2 more group copies like this. 
we select these three group copies and move them to the right and then these four group copies and move them again to the right finally select all these blue groups drag copies to the right and this will be your w now to better organize all these groups inside the layers panel you can select all the shapes that make up your letter press ctrl and g to group them and then rename this new group w continue with the rest of the letters from your text remember to leave three nits between each letter from your text and in the end things should look somewhat like this once you're done select all the groups that make up your letters and just apply your pink art brush from the brushes panel Reselect your original blue and yellow groups, press Ctrl and plus to zoom in on them. Apply your pink R brush, move this blue group in this location and this yellow group in this location. Press Ctrl and 0 to zoom on the entire artboard and then select just the blue group and go to Effect, Distort and Transform and Transform. Set the move horizontal slider to 16 pixels. Enter 53 in this copies box. Click OK to apply the effect. And then press Ctrl and plus to zoom in on your selected group. Hold down the Alt key to drag a copy of this group down like this. And then press Ctrl 0 to zoom out. Select your yellow group and go again to effect distort and transform and transform set the move horizontal slider to 16 pixels enter 52 in this copies box click ok to apply the effect select your yellow group along with the blue groups drag some copies to the bottom of the artboard grab the zoom tool to have a closer look at this area and use the move tool to place these groups in this location once you're done you can press ctrl 0 to zoom on the entire artboard and reselect the rectangle tool from your toolbar let's create a new shape that's the size of your artboard press shift and x to swap the fill and stroke color settings set the fill color to black And then don't forget to center your shape. Move to the appearance panel to lower the opacity of this field to 8%. Change the blending mode to multiply. And then go to effect, artistic and film grain. Move these sliders to 20, 0 and 10. Click OK to apply the effect. And return to the appearance panel to add a second fill for your shape. Move this new fill on top of this other fill. Change the blending mode to multiply. And then go to effect. Distort and diffuse glow. Move these three sliders to 10, 0 and 0. Click OK to apply the effect. And get back to the appearance panel to add a third fill. Again move it on top of these other fields, select it, lower the opacity to 15%, change the blend mode to color burn, and then click this gradient thumbnail to apply a linear gradient for your selected fill. Set the angle to 90 degrees, and then focus on the gradient sliders. Double click this left gradient slider. Set the color to black and then double click this other gradient slider. Change the color to 206, 32 and 8. Lower the opacity to 0% and return to the appearance panel to select this fill and duplicate it using this button. Change the gradient type used for this new field to radial. Reverse the order of this gradient slider using this button. And then select the gradient tool from your toolbar. 
First press Ctrl minus to zoom out. And then use the gradient tool to stretch your gradient roughly like this. With this final touch, your design is complete. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, remember to hit that like button as it helps me know that I did a good job, subscribe if you aren't already and don't forget to click the little bell icon to be notified of any new tutorials. If you are looking to learn even more, you can check out some of the other tutorials that Envaro Task Plus has to offer. I'm Andre Marius and I'll see you in the next video.